Hello everyone and welcome to the JCal Pro webinar. JCal Pro is a calendaring and collaboration extension for Joomla. Almost every community and corporate website can benefit from a strong calendar solution to expand event awareness and improve collaboration. And for Joomla websites, the obvious and most popular choice is JCal Pro. Actively, actively developed for over five years, JCal Pro offers simplicity, flexibility, a robust feature set, and gorgeous templates to fit almost any color screen scheme. Now, this webinar is hosted by cloudaccess.net. We are the host of the demo trial of Joomla at demo.joomla.org. You can launch unlimited free trials of Joomla through our platform, and each of those demo trials is active for 30 days. At any point, you can upgrade to a paid hosting package, and you can always take advantage of any of our free training materials and tutorials. My name is Ryan Bernstein. My friends call me Bernie. I'm going to be your host and moderator. And today, you're going to learn about the installation setup, categorization, and registration features of JCal Pro. You're going to learn about the customizable roles and permissions, managing locations, Joomla tags integration, back-end event management, numerous add-ons and themes, and personal and multi-calendar support. Please also listen for a special promotional offer from Anything Digital and from your host, Jessica Dunbar. I'm sorry, she's your presenter. Jessica is the marketing director at AnythingDigital.com. She's been with us before. Jessica, are you there? I am here. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have attendees from all over the world. If you want to let us know where you're attending from, we'd appreciate it. Uh, Jessica is a true generalist specialist. She understands the science and creative aspects of inbound marketing. She's trained in interpreting data, and she's, she's pretty smart. She's done a webinar with us before, had a great response. I'm getting a lot of people commenting. I'm from Madrid, California. Couple, awesome. Yeah, a couple people from Boston, Vancouver Island. And just a little bit about anything digital. They create handcrafted add-ons and extensions for Joomla. They are very, very professional, and they focus on quality and outstanding customer service. And they have a lot of tools to help create, help clients create just about any uh, website uh, imaginable, from SEO to calendaring to powerful search options and translation managers. You can get a hold of us. You see our information at the bottom there tweeted us at cloud access webinars at cloudaccess.net if you'd like to email or you can always visit our homepage. Just to remind you that I am recording this webinar. You will be able to view it later on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash cloud access. And if you haven't done so, go ahead and find that go to meeting slide out question area where you can post a question to Jessica. I know she she might like to pause throughout like she did before and take a couple questions about JCal Pro, but um, she might have some interactive questions for you all as well. Jessica, I'm going to go ahead and pass the presentation to you if you're ready. So here's my contact info. I love getting um, feedback. I want to know and improve my webinars. Am I giving too much information? Did I cover enough? Um, I don't want support questions. We have a full team of support. But any feedback you'd be willing to give me, um, I am more than willing to listen so I can improve on upcoming webinars. So expectations for this webinar. First off, I want to give a brief overview of some different ways uh, people are using JCal, some different industries and the way that they're using it. I'm going to use a little bit of an interactive new type things with a webinar. And then we'll go through a live demo, installation, setup, some fairly basics to get you started. Um, and that's where we will be, we'll finish off. And I will take questions throughout. You'll see me pause a couple times, especially um, as I finish each demo. 
Cloud access. Thank you so much, Bernie. Um, I actually, we did our demo site for this webinar with Cloud Access, and they're the official host of Anything Digital. I've had the opportunity to visit their office here in the U.S. They're not only great colleagues, um, but friends as well. So thank you so much for the invitation. Of course, anytime. And before I get started, I wanted to give some acknowledgments to our team. So I'm Jessica Dunbar. I've been working in Joomla since right around 2008. And actually, the first Joomla project I ever worked on was a integration with JCal Pro back in 2008. And it was a pretty customizable uh, JCal integration when people registered at that time they were using RSVP, when people registered, they were also registering for giveaways. So as people registered for an event, they were registering for a giveaway. From there, the module, we had to customize a randomization to pick a winner. So that was my first experience with JCal Pro. That was before I worked with anything digital. Um, shortly after that, I had flown out to my first Joomla day in Las Vegas. And that's where I happened to meet Vic. So that was our first encounter. And then now today, in 2013, I'm working with Anything Digital. So again, thank you for the invitation to speak here. I'll be talking about JCal Pro, a Joomla add-on that we distribute. Um, you heard me mention Vic. He's the CEO of Anything Digital. Um, Valley, he is our main support lead. Jeff. He is the, our lead developer, but he actually rewrote JCal Pro from the ground up um, in our newest version, so JCal Pro 3. This is all Jeff. He rocks. Yannick is a strategic partner and our lead dev for SH404 SEF. He also wrote a plugin for JCal to integrate um, his extension and has also worked on jcal in the past and then there's ron ron rocks he's our project manager inside anything digital we have a uh, task keep it up you rock so if any if everyone could take a moment and tweet at ron underscore v underscore s keep it up you rock he helped me set up the demo on Cloud Access. He worked with me, um, listened to me practice this webinar, and made sure that everything was up to par with the new Joomla 3.1, soon to be 3.2. So I'd love to see his Twitter feed full. Who uses JCal Pro? I searched the internet to find people who use our extensions. And I don't mean people, I mean industries. So I'm going to take you through a quick walkthrough of some different ways people are using JCal Pro. Universities and educational systems. I've seen the extension installed on Texas A&M and a lot of .edu's. They use a student calendar. I've seen them use athletic calendars for public game times for each sport, as well as internal for practice schedules for the students. Communities. This is a community, a city of West Bend is actually in Wisconsin. On their calendar, they have festivals, community development, and city meetings. Athletic associations. I see quite a few athletic associations, and they display when game times are, but also follow up with scores and the locations of the game. Governments. This is actually on the house.gov. Um, there's hearings for Homeland Security, the Department of Defense. 
um, state and foreign policy, and then also the links of the meetings and of the meeting notes. Bars and pubs. An interesting thing that I've seen with bars and pubs is, one, they're displaying their restaurant hours in a calendar because they vary. Also, their daily specials and their live performances. So it's pretty unique to see the way that um, bars and pubs were using JCal Pro. Richard Simmons uses JCal Pro. This was awesome when I was looking through. If you're not aware of who Richard Simmons is, either because you're very young or you may be all over the world and not know who Richard Simmons is. He is a very enthusiastic fitness instructor from the 80s. And he uses JCal Pro um, to display when his fitness classes are, the schedule, what you'll be doing. And he also has invitations because he's online to chat weekly. So Richard Simmons is a little bit of a celebrity here in the US. And I hope that people are maybe laughing at this little joke because he is quite a unique character and very, very enthusiastic. Joomla uses JCal Pro for the events. You can submit your jug meetings. You can search for events that are near you. Um, official conferences. So this is events.joomla.org. And anything digital manages this part of the site. So what about you? I love knowing, A, where you came from and how you are using JCal Pro. So if anyone would like to tweet at us, whether you're watching this demo live or if you're viewing it in two years, we still want to know. So example, I'm from the USA and I manage JCAL in a university. If anyone feels like tweeting at Cloud Access and anything digital, I would be super excited because I love to know where you are from. Coupon code. This expires July 24th. Richard Simmons rocks is the coupon code. And this will be displayed a few more times throughout the presentation. It also gives you 30% off of all of our subscriptions um, for JCal. You're going to hear me reference a couple of links and documentation. You'll see, so this is that part of the presentation. Um, the presentation will be available shortly after the live webinar, and I will tweet that out from anything digital, and Cloud Access will help. Um, so this is what I'm referring to. Our official demo site, which is actually an older version of JCal, is located at thejoomlacalendar.com. We're in the process of updating our demo site, and we will get that, uh, should be available, I would say, within the next month. So you can actually see and test a demo yourself. And here's my contact information again. I'm going to, one moment, I'm going to pause while I switch into our live demo. Are there any questions at this time? Let's see if anyone has any questions. Ruth had a comment that, uh, well, she said, Richard Simmons, LOL. He is a forward thinker, though. I'd agree. I would agree, too. <laughs> An, uh, Angel has written, or Angel maybe, I want to use it in a neighbor there in Madrid. Okay, I want So I, in a neighborhood. I think so. Perfect. That's awesome. Uh, I want to put all the events of the small commerces and associations here and also art centers around. Okay. Um, Perfect. Also another question from Angel. 
is this responsive or will it be shortly and yes I will show you responsive that's one of the main features of course of Joomla 3 and it's one of the features that we have integrated in jcal pro so yes as long as your template is responsive and you're using the newest version your calendar will also be responsive and a question from krishna is it suitable for an intranet absolutely i see it very often for an intranet in universities with the new acl of joomla you can set the permissions to view only as the registered users and I'll go into that a little bit um, throughout the presentation but for an internet it's absolutely acceptable so in a university you'll have students and you have staff and they have meetings student meetings and staff meetings students don't need to see the staff and staff they can see the student meetings. So the permissions are extremely flexible and it uses Joomla's default ACL management. Most of JCAL's uh, features are based off of Joomla, so we use that as much as we possibly can throughout our development. All right. All right. Uh, Just a couple more. You want some more now or you want some more later? Sure. Let's, let's all right. I love questions. Just picking up off of where Angel was asking about the responsivity, is it, does the responsivity work with 2.5 as well? With 2.5, that's a great question. I am actually going to have to look that up because I have not, I have worked with 1.5 and I have worked with 3.1. So I just started with anything digital about three months ago, and before that, I was I did not build out a site using JCal in either 1.6 through 2.5. So I will look into that, and I will find out for you. All right, I think this is a good point to let you proceed, and uh, we do have a few more questions, but we might get those answered as you present. Ahmed did post that I'm disconnected, and no, you're not Ahmed. I can see your question, so if you have one for Jessica. Post it, and um, let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's continue. Okay. Are you seeing my my demo here, the back end of Joomla? Nope. I'm still seeing your contact screen. It seems like it's frozen still. Okay. There we there. go. There. How about now? So yeah. you're seeing the back end of demo? We got gotcha. you. Perfect. Okay. So. In, for this demo, I'm going to use an example of education in education industry. Um, the basis will be we'll have the athletic calendar, an academics calendar, sports and events. Um, there will be a registration for a football tr tryout for a school. So this is kind of the requirements, and I think it'll make more sense as I go through. Um, JCal Pro installs like any other extension. You simply upload the package file just as you would any other extension, and you click Upload and Install. Once you install, when you go to JCal under Components, JCal Pro, Oops. All right, I'm going to pause one moment so I can log back in. As you're getting those logins, a couple people are reaching out to us via Twitter. Oh, awesome. Yep, so we're already getting some responses. We're watching those streams, folks. If you want to send anything at anything dig, D-I-G, or at cloud access, we are watching, and we can get your comments there as well. So... Once you go to components, you'll see the this about screen. The one difference that you'll see is there is an install sample data. I highly recommend that everyone installs sample sample data. It's a very light package, um, but what it does is it creates two events for you: one regular event and one repeating event, two categories, one named default and one named another, one registration form one event form, three fields with options, and this really helps you get started. 
For your convenience, you can just simply edit those fields and customize them the way you want. I highly recommend you install the sample data. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we do for, for setting up a calendar is I start with the fields. So under components, JCal Pro and fields, these are your form fields. The fields manager is used to create and manage your custom fields to be used um, to create custom event and registration forms. You can create new fields, delete, or customize them here in the field manager. So let's take a look at one of the fields that are pre-created. So with our football registration, football players generally have nicknames, so this is going to be one of the fields that we create. So the field name, this is actually the, the database name of the field, so it's not visible by the end user. The title is the title of the field used to name the form in the form field. This field description here is a description that will be displayed in the tooltip when you see when a user hovers over the over the field. Published versus unpublished is the the field will be available on the calendar or simply will not be available on the calendar. The field type. There is a large list of field types and I'll go through a couple of them. Um, for this one, it's going to be a text box. The form type. So we can decide if the field can be used on any forms, used in all forms, an event form only or a registration form only. The display position, I'm going to show you this when we um, go to the front end, the different places that um, you can display your form fields. Your field attributes. So the class name here is if you have special styling that you want in, in the form field, um, if you have a custom template. The next place are the options. Um, for a text box, we're not going to have um, extra options. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And then, of course, your permissions, which we'll go into a little bit more more, but for right now I'm going to leave this as is. So save and close, and you've created a form field. Other ones would be an email address. So again we have the field name, what you're going to call it, the description, whether it's published or not, you can put in a default value for an email address. The field type. So this is going to make sure that it is an email address that gets entered in. Your event form and your display position. Attributes, here are your class names and again your permissions. Let's talk about a multi-list. So when, when our football player is trying out, he's going to be trying out possibly for multiple positions. So his first choice, you're going to give a field name. And the difference in the multi-list 
field type. are your attributes. So this is where we get into the options. Here are the different options that your football player can select. They can be an offensive lineman, and then this is the value that gets written to the database. Here is where you can um, choose the ordering of the of the list. Is that making sense? Do we have any questions about um, the, f the form fields? Uh, well, yeah, I, there's a couple posted uh, about uh, the, f the fields. Walt posted a question, why start with fields and not categories? You, you can start with categories. If you do the default installation, it already creates two. So generally, I go in the, the order that I create in is if I need a custom form, I create all my fields. Then I create my forms. Then I create my location. Then I create my categories. And then I actually start creating the events. So depending on your workflow, this is what is working for me. because. The first thing we need to get out is people registering for um, the, the football tryouts. So for me, I'm starting with the fields. Okay. Um, you have, I, you should be, start with the fields before you, you need to create your fields before you can create a form. So that is the other reason that I start there. All right. There are some other questions. Um, I guess we'll get to one more by okay. Walt, kind of related. For email field validation, is there an option for email with DNS check? With a DNS check, I know we have CAPTCHA that you can install, the DNS checking. Um, can we get a little bit more specific on that? Walt, if you want to provide some more information about what you mean DNS check, we can get that from okay. Walt a little bit if you want to proceed. Okay. Let me, I'm in my, so we're in our, our multi-select list. So the attributes here are selected so that it's a, a required field. So they do not have to pick multiple positions for tryouts. That's where this false comes in. Required, they need to pick at least one. And of course the permissions, which I'm going to go into a little bit more. So we have a couple fields I actually have set up. Our basics um, that we need for the tryouts. So once we have all of our fields, and I mentioned um, Excuse me, let me step back one second on the fields. The fields are default Joomla fields. So in my presentation, um, I pointed out some documentation where you can read more about the fields. And that's at docs.joomla.org. So the fields for JCal Pro Forms use Joomla's own form field features. So the full documentation, you can receive some more information on Joomla.org, because that's where we based our, the creation of these fields from. So let's move on to our Forms Manager. The Forms Manager is used to create and manage custom forms to be used to create events and registrations. For this specific instance, we are doing a football tryout registration. 
The forms are created and assigned based on the categories, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but in the form manager, this is where you create, delete, and add new forms. So in the back end, it would be under JCal Pro, and then you can click on Forms. And I created a football application. So this is the title of the football application. It's simply a description of the form used to select the form to be used under the, the category. The form type. This is if it is an event form to be used in the submission or creation of events and a registration form, which this is what we are, we are building a registration form. So this is, form is enabled to have users submit registrations. So published versus unpublished. Published, the form will be visible on the calendar. Um, and unpublished, the form will not be visible on the calendar. So you created your form. Now we need to add our form field to the form. So all of the fields that you created are going to show up here. You can, with a checkbox, select which forms you want to display for your registration. And then you can choose the order. So once your fields are created, developing a form or creating a form comes pretty quickly. The biggest lifting with the field creation is complete and you can the whole process seems to come, come along a lot more smooth once you finish creating all of your custom fields. And save and close. The next step I may do is uh, categories. So this is our complete calendar. We have an athletics department, art and lit, school holidays, uh, historic dates, academic, and our sports events. So this is the categories. So we have the category title, which displays on the front end of your calendar. And maybe I think I'm going to show you the front end of where we are so we can see exactly um, what we've built so far. So here is our, our registration and our form. And this is our form that we created, so your nickname, the date of birth, the height, um, and our multi-list choosings are here. Let me go back to the home page here. So when I'm talking about the calendar categories, Here are the categories I'm talking about. So we're working with the sports event category. I'm going to go back into the back end and show you kind of where we, where we are at. So our sports event category, I just showed you that on the front end. Excuse me, my throat's getting a little bit dry, one second. So a descriptive title for your category. The alias, this is used for SEF. Uh, you can leave this blank and Joomla will fill in a default value from the title. You can, let's see, I can 
make this a little bit bigger here. Other details, um, categories in JCAL Pro can be nested the same way that content categories are created and used. So in JCAL Pro, it functions a lot the, in the same manner as when you create categories and add articles. So we're creating categories, and you can have parent categories, subcategories, and uh, or child categories. The status, you can have it published or unpublished. Publish, the, the category and its events will be visible to the users. Um, by default, all public groups, including anyone not logged in, will have viewing access. So if you select this to registered, only your registered users will, will see the calendar. Um, language. JCAL does have a multi-language support, so you can choose which language the category is available for. The publishing options. So who it's created by, the number of hits, um, and this is similar to articles, the creation date, the modified date, and you can view how many hits and extra, extra information that is pretty basic in Joomla. Your options, you can choose a different layout based on your, your template. You can select an image and you can add a note to the administrators about this category. Okay, so the JCAL Pro options. In the front end of the calendar, when we clicked on the categories, you can see these different colors. So this is where you can change the color of your category with the color picker. So we'll change this to a nice, beautiful green. The theme, unless you, we're going to leave it as either the, the basic theme for this um, presentation, but you can choose different themes based on the category. So maybe your students have a completely different theme than your athletic department. The registration form, you can choose your regist uh, what form goes based on the users that register for the event in this category. Allow event registration and the category uh, description. I'll, I'll cover that a little bit more. Your metadata options, these are global settings that Joomla provides. Um, and permissions again. So the ACL here is fairly important if you're using um, permissions. For right now, we're going to leave this leave this part here. So this is um, how we create a category and how it's used. In the old JCAL, you used to have to create a new calendar to display the athletic department versus the, the sports, excuse me, to display the athletic calendar versus the academic calendar, you would be creating a new calendar. In Joomla 3, you are creating a new category. Is that making sense? Are there any questions? There are tons of questions. OK. We can do two. All right, let's get one from Walt. Walt's uh, following up on that um, DNS check. And Walt commented that uh, DNS checks check that an email is on a real domain for validation. Hmm. That's an awesome question. I, I know that you can enable the CAPTCHA, but does it, the default Joomla install check for DNS when users register? You know, I don't know. Okay. So, 
um, it will use the default Joomla install. If you want to, actually, so one of the options with this, because we are still in the development and taking new features, I'm going to ask Jeff about that. And if you have feature requests such as that, because that is a great, a great feature is, is to have the email checks. It stops on all the web spam, um, which would be the reason why he's asking. He doesn't want the web spam on, on. So that's a great feature request, and I will dig into that a little bit more. Cool. Let's get one question from Lisa, too. Has anyone used JCal Pro to control when different users can post? Like one person posting each day. So, one specific user, or only one one post, as in only a certain number of registers can apply. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure. It's this it sounds like more of a general ACL question than. Um, or scheduling ACL. Lisa follows up. Only one person can post to the blog per day. Um, okay, so when we're talking about a blog and integrating with JCalc, because you can integrate it into your articles or into your blog. She says yes, using the calendar to integrate with the blog. Okay. So that makes perfect sense. Um, let me get back to that question because I go through a little bit of those options a little bit later in, in our demo. Sounds good. OK. Locations. Locations is a brand new feature of JCal Pro, and it was a highly demand, a uh, high highly requested feature. So um, you can, while location management is important, it also often res results in event maps to inspire a more enthusiastic response from visitors. So we created the locations module. This is brand new. When you create a location, you give it a title. You can actually um, type in an address. And this pulls from Google Maps, and it will automatically find it for you. And then you can publish or unpublish. So this is one that we already created. Let's do a, a new location. We're going to call it the football stadium. And let's look for Soldier Field. Oh, actually. Oh, I'm locking up a little bit. My keyboard stopped typing. Um, all right, let's look at, um, let's look for a university. So once you do locate and map, It will actually look up the place that you are you are looking for, and it puts in the the longitude and latitude. This is all from Google Maps. Um, you can put in an exact address, and it will also locate for you. Or you can put in names and locations, like I did with uh, Harvard University. Um, you can specify the, the size of the map, um, the default center coordinates, and the zoom. Let's see. And let's 
let's take a look at everything we created. So actually, excuse me, we didn't create an event. So here's where our events are. And here's our football application that we've been working on adding. So the event, creating the actual event is under components, events, and here's where the details are. So you'll put in the application due date. Here is our beautiful location. And if you create locations, you can choose your location right here. So we are using um, the stadium. And a little bit of details. Applicants can register online or they can drop by the stadium in person between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So. The primary category, which calendar do you want this event to show in? We want it to show in the sports events. So we choose our category. And then we can also choose um, second, secondary categories. So we're going to put in the athletic departments. Is it the privacy, is this a public event or private event? So is it internal or do they need to be registered? Our status, you can pre-create the event and leave it unpublished just like you do a regular article. Is the event approved? Yes. The language and tags. You can also tag your events and the new tagging featured is integrated here in, in JCal Pro. Your event date. So the start time and our end date for the event. Um, your time zone, this is a lot of times very crucial. Time zones are easily mixed up, but make sure to choose your time zone. And you have a few, few more options for the duration. Um, you can choose a specific hour that it ends at. Um, it can run all day. Show a start date only. Um, and then registration. So the capacity, um, the question about when, how many users can register or publish to a blog. Um, here's where you can add in a capacity and how many users can register. Repeating events, you can repeat these daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. So a football tryout may be repeated yearly, but for this, we're not going to repeat the event. There's only one session tryout. And then the contact information, where is this, where do the form submissions go? So we created our event, Let's and once the event is created, we need to create a menu item to display the calendar. So we've done that already. I'll go into that because there's a lot of different viewing options, so I'm going to go into that in a short while. But let's look at the front end. And someone asked about responsive. The calendar is, is responsive. Let me and you can see how the menu changes as you shorten your screen. We have a rocket theme template installed for this specific demo. Okay, so here's our, our football application. 
our due dates, the information, here's the location. If I want to find out where, where these tryouts are, I now know it's at uh, the stadium. The email address and the website address. Let's go ahead and register. Bernie, you are trying out for football today. Super. Let's make up a, an email address. Oh, nickname. Let's give you Bernie the Brute. OK. Your date of birth, um, you are going to be You're about 10 years and old. That's okay, though. <laughs> Shh. There we go. And um, how many inches? I'm guessing you are roughly 5'9"? Close enough. Oh, good. And um, you're going to be a, you're going to try out for a halfback or a running back and a wide receiver. Okay. Oh. And we I I changed the you can see the uh it is required that you choose three positions. I changed that in our demo on accident. And once you register, you get a message that you su successfully submitted your registration. In the back end, there we are. Um, you are a guest user, and you submitted a registration. And here is all of the information that we requested. Um, I had changed the telephone number to hidden, so that's why you did not see it on the form field. Um, are there any questions before I move on? Yeah, there are several. I want to get to a question. From, uh, let's see, well, Paul posted a question about the differences between the different versions of JCal Pro. Um, were you planning that for later? Okay, so the different versions from 1.5 to 2.5 to 3.0, 3 is that? No, Paul wrote from starter to standard to ultimate. Oh, okay, so the different subscription packages. That's a great question. Um, I'm going to do that right at the end. Okay. That's cool. Um, you know, a lot of other questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, Krishna's posted, will JCal take care of a meeting room allocation also? You can define that, but I think the maps will show up uh, a little bit different. So if you give the exact address and then say floor 2, meeting room 500, or 200 I suppose that would be, it will display. Okay, and kind of getting back to yes. the, uh, okay, so getting back to the map as well, Angel posted, can this work with geolocated info inside or through a third party extension? Okay, so you would be using a different maps extension to yep. provide. So the locations component that we have is integrated with Google Maps. Um, so my first reaction response would be, I don't think so, because the locations, I mean, this is based right out of Google Maps and you can put in the physical address. I don't think it's going to pull from a third party, but 
we just launched uh, 3.1, and that is a great request. If you wouldn't mind, I would like to hear a little bit more about that offline. And okay. you can email me specifically if it's either a feature request, I'd like to know which third-party extension, um, a couple of, of unique details for, for that. But everything is based off of Google Maps. All right. Um, sounds good. You know, my, my initial reaction is just to say, why use two if you can use just one? That's, that is exactly how I, I feel and what I would request. But what I see a lot of times is users are inheriting a site that have lots of components or there's a very specific reason because maybe it is a custom map of someone asked about the meeting room. So maybe there's a custom map of a brand new building layout and it's internal and it tells you internally where, where your meetings are. So there are definite reasons why you'd have multiple um, components. But yes, we try to use as much of Joomla as we possibly can. Right. So I remember when we did uh, the SH-404 Ceph, um, you kind of ran through all the uh, third-party um, extensions that it was compatible with. Are you going to show us those as well today? Sure. So SH-404 Ceph has its own plugin. The main um, component or third-party extension is Uh, it's a community extension, and now I'm drawing a blank. Not community builder. But we are actively working with third-party um, extension developers and getting them to integrate. There are lots of plugins available, um, and I I will take you through those. It differs quite a bit from 1.5 throughout uh, 3.0. In 1.5, uh, the registration features were based off of having to add another extension called RSVP, our component called RSVP, um, if we have any 1.5 old school users. That was how we built um, JCal. So now we completely integrated the registration right into JCal in Joomla 3.0 and JCal 3.0. Um, let's go into the menu management and the displaying of your, your calendar here a little bit. So the menus and the different layouts are fairly unique. So you have your, we have JCal um, displaying as the home page currently. So this is what we are seeing. This is the menu item that we're talking about is this display right here. So the menu type is JCal and you have lots of options to display or override the menus. Um, we're going to go with the monthly view, where it's located, the parent item, um, ordering. These are all very basic uh, Joomla menu options. So your advanced options is you can actually run a category filter. So on our categories, if you want to display on the home page the academic calendar rather than the full calendar, let's see, clear the cache. So now you see just the academic calendar on the home page. There are multiple view
views with JCAL. So here's where we have selected just a, a category view and added it as a menu item. You can click on your categories. This will show you the exact event. Um, here's a different category view, which is just a different calendar. So it is the extracurricular. So we have our sports and arts and entertainment categories. This is what an event view looks like. So a specific event you can add to a, a menu item. Add new event. Oh, we have to be logged in to add a new event. Um, I had created a use. We'll go back to that. I should have set that menu item to special. Uh, to registered users can only see that menu item. Admin view, I'm, I'm going to get an, uh, it's going to request a login. Other views, so this is a flat view. Um, our template is giving us a little bit of an interesting display there. But this would be a flat view, and if you want to see this go responsive, I can grab my the calendar is completely responsive. So on the right hand we have some modules. As you've seen before, I tagged some items and created tags just like I do in normal Joomla. And this will give us all of the the tags. So anything tagged with sports will display. The JCal Pro Flex calendar. Will show us our academic events. Um, and then on the right hand side we have some mo modules showing the the events. So the Senior Baseball Invitational that we set up, which is a repeating weekly event, I believe. And then um, our football application that's coming up, we displayed here. Applicants can register and you click. You go right to the event and you can register. I'm going to take you to the subscriptions of JCal since that was one of the questions. Okay. So the JCal Pro subscriptions work in a yearly yearly. So the starter package includes everything, um, the versions from 1.5 to 3.0. You do not get the location, the premium themes, the flex module, or the editor plugin, which we did not go through the editor plugin. Um, we're running a little bit short on time here. So the standard package is $75 a year. It comes with the support, the same um, pieces. And it does come with the location, the, the premium themes, which you can use the themes on three domains. JCal Pro you can use on as many times as you want. It also comes with the Flex module and the editor plugin. And then our ultimate package which is $250 a year, gives you the access to our support forums to ask questions, um, the Joomla versions, and you can install the themes on unlimited domains. And let me give you a quick...
TheJoomlaCalendar.com is our current demo site. This is, we are in the works of updating this. But this is where you can take a look and see Joom Social. <laughs> now I remember. That is one of the third parties we are currently working on integrating with that a lot of people use, use with um, JCal. So here is where you can actually log in. You can see some back back end screenshots. Like I said, we're going to update this for the new Joomla versions. Coming up here soon. Let me show you that coupon code one more time. And what other questions do we have right now? There are a couple left. Um, a question from Walt, I wanted to get to um, about the zooming in on a map. So on the map location, do you just change the zoom on the map when you create the location, or is there a different option to change that? Yes. You can um, change the location, the zoom, um, right in, in the map. So when you display and zoom in, that will be what is displayed. Okay. And um, Mark posted a question, can you add an image to an event? Yes. In the categories, you can add an image. You can add an image also in, um, in the event. Okay. And a question from Richard. Let's say you have a repeating event. For, a foot, okay. for the football tryout for five days. And one of those days gets rained out. Can you change the info for the rain out date, for example, canceled due to rain? Well, oh, not, absolutely. While not affecting the other repeating dates, though? Oh. Okay, so when you change the event for the repeating event, it will ask if you want to change just that event or if you want it to go through all of the events. So when you add the rain date and the tryouts, yeah, it will only be for that event or it can change all of the events. So if you want to change all of your repeating events, let's say you had a misspelling, those, those features are available. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's all the time that Jessica actually has for today, folks. Um, I know that there may be some additional questions. I'm going to steal the presentation back Perfect. from Jessica here. And you should all be able to see my screen now. This is our YouTube channel, and I've recorded this entire webinar. And you can come back uh, and view this again at youtube.com forward slash cloud access if you scroll down to our special Joomla webinars playlist here it will be added here later today. And if you want some additional help, there were a few questions that weren't answered, come to the Anything Digital pre-sales forum. You can post a question about JCal Pro or any of their other really great extensions to find out, um, to find out if the features you're looking for are there. So, Jessica, you did a and fantastic... And feature requests are also uh, highly encouraged right now because we are developing along with Joomla 3. So any feature requests are highly encouraged. Cool. Excellent. You did a fantastic job, Jessica. Thank you, everyone. I see a couple tweets here. Yeah, I can't wait that to... That is awesome. I can't wait to schedule the Watchful um, webinar with you. That sounds great. We can get that scheduled right after right after this. Cool. So if you come to our site and you go to Joomla webinars, we do have a lot of upcoming events, a lot of free daily webinars. But we also have, uh, oops, I need to log out here, sorry. Uh, we also have a couple webinars upcoming um, that I wanted you to know about, including... Um, a webinar on access control levels. We've had a lot of users ask for this one over time, so we have a J uh, Joomla 3.1 ACL Explained webinar. That's with one of our employees, Jonathan Gaffill, 
our operating manager. And following that, we have the ACL Manager webinar. This is an extension that helps you, um, uh, helps with ACL. It makes ACL a little bit easier with a clickable permissions grid. And uh, Sander Potcher, who is a member of the Joomla um, project leadership team, he is uh, also the, the developer of this extension. He's going to come in and teach us about this extension. And we also have a Joom Shaper Helix V2 webinar coming up later on in August. This extension, or I'm sorry, this is a template framework, um, a popular one, and uh, really, really cool back end on this. Cool back end. So if you're interested in building a template using Helix V2, come back and check this out. A couple other more um, that we're scheduling, and we'll definitely keep you posted. Some people saying thank you. Thank you guys for attending. Good luck developing that Joomla site. We hope to see you in a webinar really soon. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.